Mentioning Starfield to a person is like flipping a coin. Either you get a passionate rant about how the game cured their illness and made them find God, or you get a passionate rant about how it killed their entire family and burned down their village. So you can f***ing current dayers, f***ing pronouns, current day Californian f***ers, we're boring! I see this as beautiful personally, that some are so passionate to love or hate a video game, while everyone else on the outside looking in are just wondering, what the hell caused everyone to get this passionate in the first place? That. That's why. The last time a Bethesda game came out was eight years ago. The last time a Bethesda game came out that wasn't a buggy mess was eight years ago. I give up. Fallout 4 came out eight years ago. A lot of people skipped 76 because Rick and Morty weren't enough to convince people to buy this dumpster fire. Ninja maybe has some min 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 Finally, representation. Then in 2018, the first new Bethesda IP in the last 20 years was announced. Said to be Todd Howard's baby and magnum opus. It was trademarked in 2013 and then entered development in 2016, but had been a concept in the dome of Todd for about 25 years. I was writing games when I was, you know, 12, whatever. The other kids in the block would say, you know, I'm gonna play quarterback for the Cowboys. And I'd be like, I'm gonna make video games and everyone's gonna play them. Like, you dork, go back to the chess club. Who's laughing now? The game was going to release in 2022, but then got delayed a whole year so that they could squash and exterminate all the little bugs that got caught in the webs. And now after all this time, the game is out for you to play. Starfield, a Bethesda RPG in space. It's extremely overrated and really outdated and not that good. When an NBA player needs to hit a buzzer beater to win a game, that's when everything becomes most crucial. Can you keep under pressure when the lights are shining brightest? Look, I'm not Luka Doncic. None of you could compare to greatness like that. But I am Dr. Skipper. And something I live for is when everyone is diluted and I feel like a crazy person. Every single one of these videos was made during honeymoon phases, and taking a stance during a honeymoon phase is the most dangerous. You want to know something I hate in this world? Glazing. Can I talk my Can shit talk again? My Can't stand it. Meat riding, glizzy gobbling, call it whatever you want. Can't stand it. You know what else I hate? Obnoxious opportunist. If you think a balding man-child screaming about roleplay options in a roleplay game is the prime example of a professional hater, then wait till you get a load of me. Because someday I'm going to meet God, and when he asks why you didn't talk about Starfield in 2023, and I answer is because I didn't want to piss people off, it may not be a sufficient reply. Starfield is a game with a lot to talk about. It's not black and white despite whatever you might think. Also your best case, control your lady friend. This bridge is no place for a woman. Yes, Commander. Excuse me? I demand. You are in a position to demand nothing, kitchen wench. But you don't get a say in this video, so shut up. There's layers to peel back and analyze on what this game achieves while also discussing what it doesn't achieve and could do better. And while Starfield is an immersive game to some, it's also a restricted Disneyland ride that doesn't let you role play and experience its galaxy to the full potential of what it advertised, while also being plagued by Bethesda's outdated game design. No, 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 please don't kill me, please, I'm not, I don't want to die, please don't kill me, please don't. And these problems aren't a jump scare in the slightest. The problems of Starfield have been cruising for a bruising from those tunnel snakes for a minute. And that kettle has been boiling since 2008. But it's 2023 now, and Bethesda has a blood trail of mistakes and messes that haven't all of a sudden disappeared because we're in space now. But I'm f***ing him, so grab a snack, get a blanket and a soda, and tag along as we go down this rabbit hole. And while we're at it, you're gonna subscribe, and you're gonna f***ing like it. Oof. Sorry, <laughs> just, just had to get through that intro, my good friend. Uh, Starfield is a great display of Bethesda magic. The last time Bethesda received proper flowers was for Skyrim, which even at the time had a lot of regression from Morrowind and Oblivion. But Skyrim was the first game to fully nail down Bethesda magic. And before Skyrim, you had Fallout 3, which was the beginning of Bethesda magic. And in between those two, you had Obsidian's Fallout New Vegas, which showed that smoke and mirrors of Bethesda magic could actually become a reality if you put in the effort. But when you look at Bethesda's recent catalog, you notice a bad trend that runs through them. Every Bethesda game is outdated, outshined, and doesn't do anything innovative. But what they are successful at is Bethesda magic. I know you're getting tired of me saying this word over and over again without explaining what the hell it is. I'm sorry, let me explain what Bethesda magic is. Bethesda magic is a theme park ride. Ironically, Bethesda's making an Indiana Jones game, so let's use the Indiana Jones ride from Disneyland for this example. To ride Indiana Jones... <laughs> you wish. Fucking quiz! 
To ride the Indiana Jones attraction, the first thing you gotta do is wait in line. But the line is made to immerse you in the setting of this ride so that you forget that you're just in a queue for the main attraction. And when you get on the ride, you're full of joy and excitement as you tag along Indiana Jones to escape an adventure of fun and scary thrills. They're shooting blow darts, a giant boulder comes in, Harrison Ford is there for realsies, I swear to god, that's actually him! And then after the ride is over, a kid is gonna be ecstatic, thinking that everything that just happened was real, and now feels like a part of the story. And the adult who knows it's all fake had to be whipped and slaved to afford these goddamn tickets. It's just happy that they got to have some fun while being immersed in fantasy before returning to a life of cold buds on the weekend and beating their wife. This is why people enjoy Bethesda games. Starfield, Fallout, Skyrim. Without game design, what are they to their core? Space, apocalypse, and fantasy. Three settings, three RPGs, pick your poison. Bethesda games are extremely successful because no one makes a Bethesda game like Bethesda. They're the only game studios that have really cool settings that allow you some control while also making you feel like an important piece in a big world with easy to control gameplay. None of them have groundbreaking combat, roleplay, graphics, or even exploration, but what they do have is ground breaking manipulation. Just like my ex-wife Rebecca, that stupid bitch. Fallout 4 in 2015 regressed massively from New Vegas. It focused on being a shooter more than an RPG. It also released the same year as The Witcher 3, which exposed the game's problems massively, showing that Fallout 4 was already outdated when it launched in 2015. It was a bad RPG, the gunplay was mid, the graphics were nothing special. You gotta remember, Battlefront 2015 came out the same year for comparison. Like, look at Boba Fett in the snow, that's a, that's a man right there. The game was also a buggy mess, pushing Bethesda Bethesda's old ass engine to the limits. And even with all those faults, people were still in love with the Bethesda magic. New Vegas and Fallout 3 are ugly to look at and not very fun to play. Fallout 3 released a year after Halo 3, and Fallout New Vegas came out the same year as Red Dead Redemption and Halo Reach. And while I know New Vegas is an obsidian game, it's Bethesda's assets and engine. My point is that Bethesda games have always had this problem. People today still play New Vegas because it offers a lot more than Fallout 3 in substance, but with Fallout 4 and all of its problems, a lot of people turned their brains off and shot their shots in Boston like they're fucking Larry Bird. You are not really forced to care about anything else if you don't want to. You are the lone wanderer in the apocalypse. Made it a fuck. Oh! and you want to rescue your son, while also carrying the Celtics to a championship while drinking buds on the weekend. Also, this plot was done better in Finding Nemo. Hell, it even looks better in Finding Nemo, but you get the point. I never knew my father! Come here! The main reason why Fallout 76 failed is because it didn't have Bethesda magic. If the game was full of NPCs and pre-made decisions with a basic campaign, people would have loved that Indiana Jones ride. He's a Sith! He'll kill us all! Kyle, no! The Oscar goes to West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains. This game fucking sucks. But you had no choice or roleplay like you would in Fallout 1, 2, or New Vegas. But you also had no Bethesda magic either. All you had was Fallout 4's game design, which is an outdated mess that didn't really succeed at doing anything besides providing a cool setting, but take that magic out the setting and the game is dead. Nobody's gonna shoot death claws with no end goal for hours to find some happiness in their life. Unless they have brain damage, that's a whole nother story. Also, I lied earlier, Bethesda is not the only one who makes Bethesda games. And it's not Obsidian, they made an Obsidian game unlike the others. Another really good Bethesda game is Cyberpunk 2077, made by CD Projekt Red. Cyberpunk is something I was so excited to talk about in this video, I'm like a kid on Christmas. Because Cyberpunk is the best example of Bethesda magic that's not from Bethesda. And it's also a great reason why you shouldn't trust shit from anyone who glazes this fucking game. Fallout 4, Cyberpunk 2077, and Starfield are all steps down from games like Oblivion, New Vegas, and many more RPGs as well as open world games. But Cyberpunk 2077 has received more backlash than both Fallout 4 at its release and Starfield as of now. Which makes you question, what would the noise be around Starfield if it launched as a buggy mess that ran like shit? Because Starfield has some of the exact same problems as Cyberpunk, but since it's at least playable, the Bethesda magic can take over skepticism. Where for Cyberpunk, you didn't get that Bethesda magic until years later, when it was playable and everyone gave it a second chance after its popular anime. And recently, people loved its new expansion. Just don't forget, the game is fixed. Cyberpunk 2077 had so much hype because people expected it to have the RPG freedom of New Vegas and the city scale of GTA 5 and the main story and open world polish of Red Dead Redemption 2. You're a good man, Arthur Morgan. Good man and the looting and gun variation of Borderlands 2. It was also announced seven years before its release date, had a bunch of delays to clean the game up. It was also just a really cool game premise. Be my man. 
Looking at my bitch, I bet she get your ass a bone. And at launch, besides being unplayable, it was just Fallout 4. Cyberpunk 2077 is fun to play. It's a cyberpunk theme park ride. You can choose live paths that don't really affect the game. You can shoot people from different factions that don't really get fleshed out and there's also no consequence. You can do a bunch of interesting side missions that teach you about its world while not having any impact on it. You can meet a bunch of side characters that you don't really have an impact on either but might enjoy. You could gun through the main story where the only impact you have is getting some side characters killed by forced progressive decisions. And that's Cyberpunk 2077. A lot of the game's problems also apply to Starfield. But Starfield is not equal to Cyberpunk. Starfield does a lot of things worse than Cyberpunk. Also, Cyberpunk is three years older than Starfield, and Starfield came out eight years after Fallout 4. Bethesda is not an indie company. They are a AAA game studio that is constantly getting outclassed by everyone around them. Hell, they still can't even live up to their B team that they fucked over in 2010 after making them look like fucking fools. A game not being buggy at launch should not be the standard. It's not an accomplishment. And running at 30 FPS on modern consoles shouldn't be applauded either. Nor should telling people to get better PCs because Todd can't optimize a game at launch to save his life. We really do push the technology, so you may need to upgrade your PC for this game. Joseph Anderson made a statement once about Skyrim, and this is how I feel about Starfield. It's like a very shallow, but very wide puddle. It may be very basic fun to splash around in it, but there's still so much to play with it. I didn't hate Starfield when I played it. On the contrary, I actually had a lot of fun with Starfield. I'm not Eeyore, the Grinch, or Garfield, okay? Bethesda magic works on me. In 2015, I was in eighth grade, and I got Fallout 4 for Christmas, and fell in love with the post-apocalyptic Boston. And now as an adult, that Bethesda magic has once again done miracles on me. I sat in the custom creator and made a bunch of funny guys before I settled on Drizzy himself. You don't actually play anything yet. No, I'm just trying to make Drake. It's not gonna happen, little bro. Dude, your video is not gonna come out. You're gonna spend the entire time in the fucking character creator. You're never gonna play the game. Embarrassing! I flew my little spaceship and got into dogfights. I found the Batcave and explored a bunch of planets. I learned about the world and its politics. I killed monsters and pirates and aliens. I got hooked. War never changes. My friend Typo made this really good analogy. He said that playing Starfield is like being Andy from Toy Story, in both good ways and bad ways. You have cancer, Andy. I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor. I'm a tumor, I'm a tumor. You role play in your head when you can't in game sometimes. In Cyberpunk, I always felt like a cool bounty hunter, doing contracts and getting paid. But in Starfield, I actually get to be Boba Fett. I got a sick ass spaceship and a space babe, and I kill people with that spaceship. And I'm also bald, and I get beat up by sand natives with sticks. My life was just like the ending of Chicken Little. Starfield has the basics of what space games won't let you do, like Outer Worlds, Warframe, Outer Wilds, No Man's Sky, and many others. Your ship has a purpose. You will get in dogfights and do hyper jumps. Or you're gonna board enemy ships and clear out pirates. You could be a moral gunslinger or a thief. It's a great first time experience if you allow it to be. And you're gonna have fun with its general concept. But when I finished the game, I started talking to friends. And the things I thought were unique to me were no longer unique. And then I thought about other games and the Mysterio illusion began to fade. You see, after writing something like the Cars Ride at Disneyland, <laughs> So what college do you girls go to? Oh, you're in high school? Could have fooled me. We're gonna keep using Disneyland, by the way, since they got fun-themed rides. But after you ride the Cars ride, a question will pop into your head after. Do I want to do that again? The ride was fun for the three minutes it lasted, but to get those three minutes, you had to wait in line without sitting down for an hour in the beaming California sun. Ah! California ah! sun! But for the first time, you had that delusion of experiencing something new. So you were okay with dealing all the annoying stuff because it was a new experience. Starfield was extremely fun because it was new. I haven't played a Bethesda game in forever. I also love space. I love shooting stuff. The graphics were pretty. I get to be space Batman. I also did a bunch of missions that were fun. But now that that Mysterio illusion is gone, a lot of stuff from this game pisses me off. Starfield is a technical marvel that pushed all technical limits. In 2014, maybe, Starfield's graphics are passable due to the game's neat NASA punk art style. But in comparison to games like Red Dead Redemption 2 or even Cyberpunk, Starfield's not gonna blow you away. Which is okay because graphics aren't everything when it comes to a video game. Sorry, Kratos. I am hungry. Sorry, Joel, but I like wearing a chicken mask to kill people in a pixelated environment. But when your game isn't a graphical marvel and also acts dead on the inside, we got a problem. Cyberpunk is a big city to play in. It's still limited in some ways. Okay. okay. <laughs> you can't go inside every single apartment complex, but Night City is still massive with a lot of different areas to explore and kill people in. Also, the NPCs in the city aren't dead on the inside. NPCs will always have a limit for how many models are gonna spawn in. This even happens in Starfield, so this isn't a huge problem. I mean, you're only gonna spend like three seconds to see if a dude has like a pair of new religion jeans before you shoot him in the face. But what does matter is how an NPC 
as he reacts to your actions because this helps immersion. Which is surprising to me that Starfield lacks in this department, because this should be a must since their strongest aspect is Bethesda magic. If you're not going to put a bunch of effort into the RPG aspect, then at least have the people around you act like real people. In Cyberpunk, if you shoot in public, NPCs will scatter. In Spider-Man, if you swing close to NPCs, they'll get scared and fall over. In Grand Theft Auto V, you have this iconic moment. Asshole! Hey, fuck you, bitch. You are dead meat. I want to apologize. 1988, he a 12 year old boy it's a small detail but those small details begin to matter because it makes the world feel real which helps immersion cyberpunk used to have a problem with vehicles in its world and this made the game get compared to gta in a bad way because rockstar is really good at making reactive worlds if you shot at cars they stood still and wouldn't react but they fix this now and cars will hit you and drive off in starfield you can light a place up like a bank robber or point guns at people and it's just another tuesday for these guys you can even flat out light up npcs without any consequence the ai civilians in starfield aren't the brightest tools in the shed. Rest in peace. That shit bossin'. They all walk the same and react the same, and I know the AIs of other games aren't perfect. They could still sometimes be jank, but when you look at games like GTA 5, which released in 2013, as well as Cyberpunk, it's disappointing how flat Bethesda NPCs still are. And like I said earlier, this all hinders immersion, which essentially is Bethesda magic. And something else that doesn't help is how you get around. Starfield has the same old Bethesda problem of teleportation exploration. It is tedious, and obnoxious. But on the bright side, I at least have an SSD. Fallout 4 was oh hell God. on earth to deal with. You could go into an elevator and go on an entire Forrest Gump adventure and come back to still have 30 more seconds. Loading screen after loading screen after loading screen in 2023 is a problem. It was already a problem with Fallout 4 in 2015. Having to do an animation to land on a planet, to then do an animation to get out of your ship, to then do an animation to get inside a door makes me want to stick a ray gun in my mouth and meet God. To use the elevator in Starfield requires a loading screen for each each floor to then go into a loading screen for another area. Games have been eliminating loading screen hell for a while now, one of them being Cyberpunk. In Cyberpunk, the elevator actually works. It goes up and down in real time. A lot of areas in Cyberpunk have you just walking inside rooms instead of going into loading screen after loading screen after loading screen. Even in space, loading screens are still a headache. Loading screen to get into your ship, loading screen to get into space, loading screen to go on a planet, loading screen to get off your ship, loading screen to go into a building. In between all this, you're navigating through a confusing menu to find out where the hell you're going. Where the hell is New Atlantis? I can't find it. This is a Bethesda problem. They're still using the creation engine, which is old as hell, causing these limitations. All they did was polish the visuals and add physics, which is nice. Cool, someone gets to spawn in a bunch of potatoes to get some Twitter likes. But those physics bog down the game's FPS and is not worth the trade-off of seamlessness. AAA games can be seamless. Spider-Man Miles Morales launched with the PS5, and they made it a point to show off the PlayStation's new SSD, and how exiting buildings can now be done in an instant, where on the PS4, this wasn't a possibility. Cyberpunk demands a lot at times, but the city is rendered in real time to avoid loading screen problems. And Starfield is not easy to run either. Like I said earlier, on Xbox, it's capped at 30 FPS for consistency, since anything higher is going to result in frame dips, and on PC, it's been shown to have frame problems. No Man's Sky is also a space game that has seamlessness. You can land on a planet, leave your ship, explore the planet, get back on your ship, and leave the planet all in one move. The loading screens ruin immersion in Starfield. It makes it feel like you're moving from preloaded box to box. You are not in a spaceship, just a transition screen. And it begins to bog down the game because you're not docking onto another ship. You're clicking A on a space door to get teleported to another loading screen to then click A again to go to the next generated box. It's intrusive. There should be loading screens for hyper jumps and for leaving planets. That's it. Everything that happens in preloaded spots should already be generated. I should be able to board ships seamlessly. I should be able to open doors seamlessly. And we cried about this when Fallout 4 came out. But now you have SSDs, so you just gotta deal with the black screen for two seconds unless you're stuck in an annoying force animation to trick your immersion. Also, if you have an old hard drive on PC, then you can go f*** yourself. So with all these annoying loading screens, the star map also made me want to go meet God. Open map, set course. Open map, set course. I want to go back to New Atlantis. Where is that again? Oh, I can't remember. So let's do the mission to talk to Sam Co. so I could go back to New Atlantis and then after set course to the next one. Let's go to the key. Oh, you don't have strong enough grab drives. So let's make you play a game of Clue on where to go to then be put into three loading screens to get where the fuck you want to go. Grab jumping multiple times in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was seamless. It also made Baby Groot throw up. But in Starfield, it's a chore and made me want to throw up as well, but not with excitement. You can't even do three grab jumps back to back. You have to play with the menu before, and it's animation after animation with a clunky map in between. Like, holy shit, Mass Effect even had a better system in 2007. But hey, at least you get to explore hundreds of awesome planets.
Zelda, Red Dead 2, Elden Ring, The Witcher 3, Cyberpunk all have a lot going on for them in their open worlds. Starfield is now a thing of its own, and the idea it has going for them could work greatly. Having not a huge world to explore but a bunch of mini worlds with unique things is a good idea. It's what No Man's Sky did, but Starfield just does it so poorly. Planets have procedurally generated content, which means that the cool stuff you're going to want to explore is auto-generated from planet to planet, and in between these locations all you have is boring shit to scan and sometimes random wildlife that has really bad AI, and abandoned areas with pirates looting, and unlike games like Far Cry or even Halo Infinite to an extent, no factions lay siege to any planets, so you're not going to be fighting for territory claimed by Spacers, Ecliptic, Freestar Galactic, Varun, Crimson, or even the United Colonies, which is just a missed layup. Like imagine if you could strengthen allegiances in Starfield by conquering claimed areas in the name of whatever house you chose, taking over Spacer claimed territory for the United Colonies, or raiding United Colony territory for the Crimson Fleets. It would strengthen the factions in Starfield and give a fun shootout for these empty planets. Tell me sweet little lies, Todd. These planets are boring. You are coping if you think scanning animals, rocks, and plants is engagement. Random space battle dogfights are fun, so why is there nothing happening on foot? And you know what's worse about this filler? Is exploring the filler. It sucks. If you're gonna give me boring wild areas, then let me traverse it, Todd. Why is everything spread so far apart with no traversal or incentivizing manipulation? Breath of the Wild was designed to constantly keep you exploring on foot by giving you distractions, and to get these distractions, you are able to climb and glide and get a horse when necessary. In Red Dead, you have a horse. In Skyrim, you have a horse. In The Witcher, you have a horse. Minecraft, you have a horse. In Cyberpunk, you have vehicles. In GTA, you have vehicles. Elden Ring, a From Software game that was famous for backstage stabs and rolling, has an interesting world full of life, and even then, you have a horse because walking is not fun. All you have in Starfield is a jet boost, not even an alternate mode so that you can continuously fly like Iron Man, because to do that would mean that you could also have fun in space, which means you'd have to exit your ship and fly in space, but this is Bethesda, and that means more game design. This is possible, by the way. People find an exploit to see what it would look like, but hey, the modders will find a way to make this a reality, so let's just not do anything. On planets, you will run till you're out of stamina, which is very little since the upgrade for it was bugged for two weeks, then you boost over and over again. But Skipper, all the horses and cars are in open world games, this is Starfield, it makes no sense. You know who is smart enough to understand that gamers are gonna get bored of exploring empty places with the intention of going from point A to point B? Bungie! In Destiny, you will fly to places intended for stuff, and instead of forcing you to walk, they give you a space motorcycle. And this was in 2014, a year before Fallout 4. If you're gonna be lazy, Bethesda, then just own it. Just let us be able to click a button to park these ships at these places. You know, since we can't do it ourselves like you would in No Man's Sky. I would rather have a cutscene to get where I need to go rather than running and boosting over and over again. It's boring. Traversal is such an important part to exploration because it lets you be able to experience these great places but not linger around so much that it gets annoying. Red Dead 2 is a gorgeous game with a gorgeous world, but having a horse allows it to become such a great backdrop while I traverse it. Same with so many other games. So for Starfield to have such boring areas with bad traversal ruined a lot of the Bethesda magic. You would have thought that the traversal and low loading screens or the end of the stop and go experience. But we also have weight limits. Weight limits are in a lot of games. It's to stop you from having literally every item in your inventory. Because you don't need all these little damage machine guns next to the big kahunas. But what's annoying is when weight limits start to affect the game in a negative way. That's what happened in Starfield a lot. In Starfield, when you're above weight capacity, your oxygen burns even when you're just walking. And when you run out of oxygen, it starts to get replaced by CO2 that begins to damage your health. This is a hindrance. You do not want to go over the weight limit. So to not deal with this problem, you have to neglect a core part of the game. Most of my playthrough, I avoided materials and junk because it made my experience horrible. But even food and aid items would add weight, which meant that I got punished for looting and exploring. These gameplay choices are awful, but even with them in place, why is the base and max weight limit so low? Weightlifting was the first perk I fully upgraded, but even fully upgraded, it's only 219 pounds. So throughout the game, I was constantly dumping resources and junk, which meant I couldn't ever craft or research. I know you could put it into your room at the lodge, but I didn't find this out until after I finished the game. Also, I'm not going to ruin the game by carrying a hundred pounds of office supplies to then just dump it at home. Even my spaceship was always at full capacity, so I could never loot in space. And this is going to be most people's experience in Starfield. They aren't going to go play Minecraft or add optics and lasers to guns or upgrade armor because to do so ruins the game's experience. And you're going to constantly be finding new guns and armor anyway, so what's the point of making the game a living hell for something that's not even worth it? It's old game design and should have been adjusted after Fallout 4. Cyberpunk did it right. Components in Cyberpunk have no weight. Aid items also 
have no weight. And sights for weapons have no weight either, alongside mods that could be applied to both weapons and clothing. Even grenades are weightless, so go ahead and stockpile those bitches. The only things that have weight are clothing and weapons. This makes the game greater, since now you could craft and modify weapons in your playthrough, since you'll always have a sole spot for components. It also helps the game be seamless, since you're not going to constantly be stopping to dump a bunch of junk that takes up a lot of weight. I'm a loot monkey. I love looking in cabinets and lockers for anything I could find. And in every game, I'm rewarded for exploring, whereas in Starfield, I'm punished. Grenades add weight, junk adds weight, and materials add weight. By the end of Cyberpunk, I had over 400 pounds available, where in Starfield, I only had 219. It's stupid. It also makes the gameplay in Starfield clunky, since looting mid-fights is usually going to put you above weight limit, ruining the pace of combat. With all these problems, please let the gunplay at least be amazing. Starfield's combat is incredibly aged. The massive change from Fallout 4 is that you can mantle, that still feels awkward, and that you can slide. But only if you get a perk to do so, that also feels awkward. And you have a space booster. That's it. Other than that, it's Fallout 4 all over again, except not as cool. When I play video games, you know what I love? Blood. I was a kid that grew up on Gears of War. I was wall hopping and turning people into slabs of meat. I was popping off heads and cutting people in half with a chainsaw. Did this mess me up today? Nope. Oh, you're a kid playing violent video games? Yeah, turn me into fucking greatness, bitch. Shut up. I'm not a saint or Mr. Rogers. I'm just a simple man that enjoys violence. In Skyrim, decapitating people is a charm. And in Fallout, who doesn't love the fun humor of blowing someone into bits or turning them into a pile of ash or making a man's head fall into his own arms? Bethesda used to embrace the chaos of dismemberment and violence. And that sentiment was carried to cyberpunk, baby. You could cut people's heads with a katana, turn them into a kebab, shoot someone's head off, shoot arms off, and execute people. You could loot their limbs on the floor. Even when they die, a pool of blood follows. If they're mostly cybernetic, blood and oil spills out. Hell, even Obsidian did this in Outer Worlds. In Starfield, none of this is present. People just die. No dismemberment, no fun laser burns or people getting turned into ash. You shoot someone, and they die. Not even a cool animation like Red Dead either. Just a default death animation, with no wounds or aftermath. It's a regression from Fallout 4, and it also makes no sense since the game is still rated M. And this regression is just how I feel in total about its gameplay. A dead giveaway that Bethesda is stuck in the past is by simply looking down. In 2023, we still can't see our feet, Bethesda. What the hell, even CSGO has this. The grenade animation is copy and pasted from Fallout 4, even down to the noise and loss of frame rate on explosions. The boost mechanic, while being neat, also feels janky. You either have a small controlled boost or a big boost, but due to the weight problem, it's hard to give yourself options, so you're usually going to be stuck with one or the other. Also, the arsenal is really bland. For a game set 300 years in future space, it goes back to just being Fallout. Ballistic weapons and laser rifles. Most legendary weapons, like the two guns you get from the Crimson Fleet Path, are just reskins of normal weapon types. The gun variation is really low, and they all do the same thing. Ballistic and lasers. Guns in Cyberpunk can range in many different ways. Tech weapons that lock on, super weapons, heavy snipers, tech shotguns, missile launchers, a gun that speaks to you. Who is it? What? I should kick your fucking ass! Johnny Silverhand's pistol with a unique reload animation and melee ability. You have the whole hacking angle, abilities that could slow down time or make you shoot wrist rockets and shit. Look at games like Borderlands 3 that came out in 2019 even. A bunch of gun types with alternate firing modes, elemental guns, infinity guns. The combat in Starfield is nothing special. What's even more embarrassing than the outdated gunplay is the outdated melee combat. Melee in Cyberpunk is flashy and viable. You have a mix of speed and carnage that makes it a beloved delight. Melee in Starfield is outdated, clunky, and age. Especially since Starfield's gone soft now, it's fucking embarrassing. Like, look at this. Might as well all be fucking baseball bats. No flash, as well as no substance. The magic stuff in the game is pretty nice. Like being able to spawn a clone of yourself or shoot a fucking fireball. But other than that, it's nothing impressive. And games from Cyberpunk to Borderlands, even Destiny, all do things better. This whole video has been talking about Starfield's bells and whistles. But now we have to address the massive elephant in the room. And that elephant's name is Jerome, and he's playing New Vegas. RPG stands for Role Playing Game. And Starfield has been put into a really awkward spot where everyone wants to give it game of the year hype but Baldur's Gate 3 has also released this year so yeah no fucking chance like there even was one before the original Baldur's Gate role-playing game came out in 1998 and Fallout the role-playing game came out in 1997 and were both very popular and now it's 2023 and you have Space Fallout and Baldur's Gate 3 showing who's adapted and gotten stronger since that Chicago Bulls dominated 90s era Starfield isn't just age in its gameplay but it's also massively regressed as a role-playing experience from games like Skyrim and even Fallout 3 suffering from the same problems that were in Fallout 4, which was heavily scrutinized for being a massive downstep from Fallout New Vegas. Let's talk about immersion real quick. Bethesda's voice acting is iconically scuffed, like this funny-ass retake in Oblivion. Right. 
Wait a minute, let me do that one again. And this wasn't the only one. This happened multiple other times. You also have Todd Howard himself with an Oscar performance. That really pisses me off. And while this is all really fun to laugh at since it's the past, uh, the present jank just pisses me off. Bethesda, with a lot of money, time, and resources, have dropped the ball on immersive roleplay. Starfield is a flat-out embarrassment when looking at games like Cyberpunk and even Baldur's Gate 3, which had less resources and money than Bethesda. Every character is flat and soulless looking, their dialogue is underwhelming, and their writing is mediocre. Also you, yes you, Drizzy Drake, suck as a character. The Disneyland ride becomes problematic when you have no influence on where the ride goes. The fun of roleplay is being able to make an impact on the world you play in, which can also progress the story in many different ways. Cyberpunk is a bad RPG, and was rightfully criticized. All roleplay was a linear path to the main quest of the game. A great quote once said from Willem Dafoe in the hit animated movie Finding Nemo represents this. All drains lead to the ocean. But at least for a Disneyland ride, the main cyberpunk quest is a bit interesting. Even Fallout 4's is a bit interesting. Dead guy stuck in my head in corrupt government, and I need to rescue my son who was stolen from me. While being shit RPGs, they both at least can be played as fun movies. Starfield though, the main quest is awful, and the world around you is hindered because of it. Making it not a fun and credit coaster adventure, or an immersive roleplay experience. And this is because Starfield has no guts. This whole video, Fallout New Vegas, has been hanging from a string taped on the ceiling being used for comparison. But why, Dr. Skipper? Why do you keep teasing New Vegas? It's because Fallout New Vegas is one of the best roleplay games of all time. Of all time! Way better than anything Bethesda has ever made, including Skyrim. And this is because of the massive guts that Obsidian Entertainment had. Giving you the keys to its world, allowing you to do whatever the hell you want. And I mean this, no smoke and mirrors. There's a robot in the game named Yes Man that can't die, and the only reason he can't die is so that you could complete the game. And this is because you are able to kill every single person in Fallout New Vegas if you want to. Unless they're children, but you could get a mod and send those little shits to meet their maker. Having the ability to kill everyone in a game requires a lot of guts, because it means that the game has a ton of alternate choices around every decision you make, meaning that the game's world has a lot of writing and attention to detail. New Vegas and Starfield have very similar structures. You have a bunch of facts with lore and history. In New Vegas, you have Caesar's Legion, the New California Republic, the Brotherhood of Steel, and Mr. House. And in Starfield, you have the United Colonies, the Freestar Collective, House of Varun, and the Crimson Fleet. And under these, you have smaller fish like the Followers of the Apocalypse. And for Starfield, you have the Ecliptic, Spacers, etc. But both games have a lot of players in the kiddie pool. In New Vegas, the main story is that each one of the factions wants to claim New Vegas. So this really basic idea leads to a bunch of nuance that leads to the ending of the game of who gets New Vegas. And the the whole story leading to this ending is based on what you do. What factions do you have allegiance with? Who do you meet through your adventure to help get you your goals? The game is centered around choice, making every faction important to learn and interact with. But you are not forced to. You could tunnel vision down one rabbit hole and beat the game. You could kill everyone and beat the game. There is no hand holding. It's whatever you want to do. In Starfield, you have no choice. The game is structured around this boring unity plot where you're forced to be a part of a team that has good moral explorers that want to Find artifacts because why the fuck not? You could beat the main game in two hours by playing Minecraft and getting all the artifacts for the ending just to be that you reincarnate and get stuck in a loop of doing the same events over and over and over again. And because of this, the entire game is all smoke and mirrors. The Starborn are hardly fleshed out and have no end game other than New Game Plus, and since this campaign is so tunnel vision down this one choice, it makes the rest of Starfield play out like a museum. In a museum, you look at stuff and see history, but you can't interact or touch anything. That's Starfield side quest. You could do all the side quests for all the factions in Starfield, but it has no overall impact on the game's story or narrative. In Starfield, there is no consequence or karma system, and having no consequence makes this game feel spineless and lazy. In New Vegas, you could go right up to Caesar and smoke him from the jump if you want to. And by doing this, the Legion hates you, and the whole game changes around this decision. In Starfield, you can meet up with the Council of the United Colonies and try to light them up, but you aren't allowed to. You can't even break allegiance with United Colonies if you wanted to either. You literally can't. If you go to the NCR and light up civilians, you become hated by the NCR, which closes quest lines that could shift how the entire game plays. If you go to New Atlantis and shoot at the place like a terrorist, you get a bounty that you could pay off and everything goes back to normal. The United Colonies don't hate you, it doesn't affect how the story pans out, nothing. And this bleeds throughout the whole entire game. You have no consequences. I decimated a United Colony ship with pirates, and I was still able to become a United Colony citizen and do an entire quest line for them. I met the fucking council after destroying one of their ships. There's a mission where old earth people want to inhabit a planet that is claimed by a resort owner. So so you talk to the business no, asshole no, no. and you have two options. Give the travelers grav drives so they can find another planet. Or blow up their ship. You can't help them invade and take the place over. And you can't stick it to the snobby, money-hungry asshole either. 
I blew up the ship, and then after I made an attempt to blackmail him. And he gave me no money, so in return I was gonna kill this motherfucker just to find out he's invincible, and that he can't die. The reason he can't die is because it's not written in the game for this planet to become hostile toward you. It's training wheels bullshit. Blow up the ship, fix the drives, they all lead to the same outcome. Even on the ship, you can't just kill all of them, because certain NPCs can't die. Which is funny, because in order to make a decision like blow up the fucking ship, you have to get a key card from one of these assholes. You can't just kill it and take off his fucking corpse. You have to loot him before. Fucking stupid. During the Freestar Galactic plot, we rescued an injured lady and I felt hateful that day. I was a professional hater. I wanted to be a pirate, so I was gonna smoke this bitch and take her ship. But you can't, because you need her to progress the Free Star Galactic side plot, so she can't die. You heard, Scalywag. <laughs> Repair my ship. I think you mean my ship. This game is fucking lazy. In New Vegas, you could be a despicable asshole with no morals if you want to. But in Starfield, no matter what, you are forced to be the good guy. And the moment I noticed this is when I went with Sam Co to Aquila City. In Aquila City, a gang is robbing a bank and they have hostages and everyone outside has their guns drawn. When this happened, my ears pricked up because it reminded me of the good spring battle in Fallout New Vegas. It was a side mission where you got to make a choice. You could help defend a town from a gang or you could side with the gang and take over the town. So I took this interaction really seriously in Starfield to then be disappointed. Because there is no choice. You either fight the gang and kill them all, or you persuade them to quit and they go to jail. You can't side with the robbers and fight Aquila City, burning ties with Sam and the Free Star Galactic, because to do so would mean that you would have to kill Sam Co, who is viable to the Constellation campaign. So instead of ruining the campaign, you have no choice. Starfield lacks nuance. Thanks to you, Delgado's cut me from the fleet. Well, you know what? You better get your own fleet, because I'm coming after you. Hold it right there. You owe the fleet a debt. If you interfere with me getting some sleep again, I'm going to have you killed. You want to die? Fine. Even down to the Constellation crew that is riddled with Gary and Mary Sue's that can't be killed. In New Vegas, you could talk to factions you deem villainous like Caesar and learn his mindset and make a choice on who you want to align your game with. Same with other groups, and by exploring nuance, you learn narratives that you might have not seen before. Like for example, I learned that the good guys like the NCR are just as flawed as the Legion. The ways they want to rule the Mojave are stupid, which is the same ruling style of the government that caused the apocalypse in the first place. And you learn this from Caesar, a guy that a lot of people deem the bad guy. New Vegas is a bunch of finger pointing until you make a decision. You can see Caesar's ruling style is bad or good. You can see Mr. House's beliefs is bad or good. Same with the NCR. You have a choice and all the NPCs have opinions and morals and political and sociological beliefs that vary. In Starfield, the members of Constellation all align with good moral practices under the United Colonies. Even Sam Co, which objectively makes no sense. What the hell? Starfield is a lazy museum, so it figures that you learn about the game's lore through literal lazy museums. Makes you miss the old days where you can learn about the history of factions from factions themselves. The lore of Starfield is that there's a big ass colony war that got resolved and a peace treaty was made that banned mechs and other shit. The United Colonies is pretty fucked when you learn about its history. They're like the Empire from Star Wars that want to control everything. So why the fuck is Sam Coe, the guy who's a part of the people who got screwed by big business, mad when I go against the United Colonies? Same with Andrea, who's a part of House Faroon that is a religious fanatic group that was once peaceful until it was neglected by the United Colonies. Her boring views on religion and morals just kept making me think of Joshua Graham, who is one of the greatest fictional characters I've ever interacted with. He's so complex and interesting, he's one of the best interpretations of a reformed Christian and has made many people who are not religious question where they stand on with their own morals after interacting with him. I have been baptized twice, once in water, once in flame. I will carry the fire of the Holy Spirit inside until I stand before my lord for judgment. Joshua is a complicated character that steals the room with every quote. Starfield doesn't have any character like this. Vladimir is an ex-Crimson Fleet member, but he's also buddy-buddy with everyone. He's a contradiction to Sarah's beliefs and doesn't have any nuance like he should. He doesn't have regrets, philosophies, he's just boring. A boring good guy. It makes no sense that these people are all happy government bootlickers. Where the fuck is the Hobie Brown-like character that hates the government and is an anarchist? I watched Mr. Robot and Andor. I know how this it works. I don't give a damn about the United Colonies. Where the fuck is the Rebellion? The only way to get a Constellation member killed is by getting close to two of them, and then picking a choice that the game makes for you on who gets to live and die. That's it. You can't start a war with these people, murder these people, they're all just dead on the inside, good guys to assist you on this shitty predetermined roller coaster for a shitty campaign. Okay, so the yapper did a lot of yapping. And to make the whole big chungus of a timeline into a TLDR, when it came to Starfield, I'm just so 
disappointed. It's actually the same kind of disappointment that I had with Halo Infinite. Bethesda's two previous games had a lot of problems, and they had a lot of time to adapt and change, but they instead chose to play it safe and not put the legwork into being greater or taking a risk. They are comfortable with being complacent, and it's most likely never going to change. We're going to repeat the same cycle with the next Elder Scrolls, and then the same cycle with whatever they do after that. Bethesda's games are outdated in every aspect. IGN was fair to not glaze this game. This is not Xbox's saving grace. This is not worth $70. Play it for free if you can, or just don't play it at all, and play great games instead like New Vegas, Baldur's Gate 3, Tears of the Kingdom, or any of the other great games that have came out this year. If you're on the fence, save your money for something like Spider-Man 2 that is coming out at the end of the month that I'm going to make a video on, so subscribe to watch that. You're not going to want to miss it. This game is mid. This game's a joke. Play it if you want to go broke. Shout out to Mingus who helped make this video. He's a great bloke. If you want a better theme park ride, play Cyberpunk 2.0 and Phantom Liberty. Also, subscribe and like this video. Play Cyberpunk. Fuck, fuck Starfield. Play Cyberpunk. Fuck Starfield. Play Cyberpunk. Fuck Starfield. Starfield.